السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار The topic for today is the way to people's hearts before we start giving some tips which insha'Allah will help us to access and reach people's hearts, we have to know that you are dealing with human beings. And the human being is the most complex creature. And those who are married and they have children, they know what I'm talking about. You're dealing with a being full of emotions and feelings, many things. It's not a machine, it's not something. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this task the most difficult task to the woman, to show them. Men cannot bring up the children. Allah has given this honor only to the women. So this being is very complex. And dealing with peoples, my brothers and sisters, is an art. You have to master it. How to deal with people. How to communicate with them. How to make your words touch their hearts. How to make your words penetrate, not to bounce and backfire. That's the most important thing. When you talk to someone, you want your words to reach, to touch his heart, and to settle their end. Not just for the sake of it, I have said it, I I, I ventured, I have said, that's it. No. Even when you give it advice or nasiha, the purpose is that this nasiha should reach and touch the heart of this Muslim so that he will improve his behavior, his character, and he will change the wrong attitude. Are you following brothers and sisters? Yeah. Okay. So we have to understand this. So this human being is a mixture of emotions, feelings. As a father, when you are dealing with your children, sometimes maybe you will hug one of them or kiss one of them. Unwillingly. Naturally, he is next to you, so you gave him a hug. The second one is watching. So are you following? He's watching. So you have to give the other one a hug. Otherwise, what will happen then? Hmm, my father don't love me. See, this is the, the being, the human being, this is the mentality. Whether they are children, whether they are adults. Your wife, she dressed up for you. And you can try it from work. And she is expecting you to tell her, Wow, you were glorious. You are beautiful. What happened? But because of the fatigueness, the tiredness, you didn't notice that she huh, is wearing a new dress or something. 
He comes to me and says, Don't you see anything? <laughs> Don't you see anything? Yes, I see you. And what else? And sometimes, take this in mind, eh? and sometimes, she will ask another thing. What else? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, oh. See? So that's why we men, this is the nature of men and sisters, they have also to forgive men. Eh? We are not that observant. You know this. Men are not observant. This is the nature. A woman? <sighs> Mashallah, they scan. <laughs> yeah. You go and visit some people, when you go back, you see the report. <laughs> you see that vase? Where well, I didn't see there was a vase. You know, in the corner, and then everything is captured. They are observed. No, they are not. So if your husband didn't see that you are dressing, go. So forget her. But you see how this is a human being. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is all, was always taking care of these things. When he comes home, he gives them the salam, he brushes his teeth, he would kiss his wives, and he treats them all the same, because he knows whom he is dealing with. Having said this, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places in the Quran, He told us that we should deal with each other in a gentle way. In a good man, nice way. Listen to this beautiful hadith, which many of you memorized, which is in Tirmidhi and it's The Prophet Sallallahu here before I start elaborating this hadith. Maybe you love someone today, maybe you hate him tomorrow. Maybe you hate someone today and you love him tomorrow. True or not? This is life. That's why in Islam we have to be moderate in every aspect. <coughs> In our love, we are moderate. In our hatred, also, we are moderate. You don't go to extremes. If someone loves you, that's why they, they say love is, love is blind, which is true, love is blind. When you love someone, you don't see his faults, true or not? You see? You don't see when you are in love. When you love someone, is perfect. When you start to realize his faults and flaws and shortcomings, when you get, when you get angry, when you start seeing, oh, you're not an angel. He's not an angel from day one. So in this beautiful hadith, the Prophet ﷺ tells us, love the one whom you love to a certain degree. Don't go to extreme. If someone loves you to the extreme, then I'm slow down. Hmm? I don't want this. You love me for the sake of Allah, you are my brother, you have to be my mirror. You have to tell me my shortcomings. I'm not a, an angel or a prophet or a messenger. I am full of faults and mistakes from head to toes. I need you to be next to me, to support me, to guide me. Not every time I ask you, what do you think? You tell me, no, I don't want this. Every time I ask you, say, you are perfect. Every, no. Tell me, as Imam Shabi said, Imam Shafi'i is telling his brother in, 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 in this poem, said, please 
free country advise me individual alone every time come and tell me do this this is wrong advise me free country but when we are alone when you leave me nasihat bil jamaah never advise me in gatherings in public what we do nowadays we say this is nasiha and it is on the web on the net how it is nasiha it is fadiha it's not nasiha you know the difference between nasiha and fadiha nasiha advice fadiha is scandal hmm? so you advise me you come to me and you tell me وَجَنِّبْنِ النَّصِيحَةَ فِي الْجَمَاعَةَ فَإِنَّ النُّصْحَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ لَوْعًا مِنَ التَّوْبِيرِ To advise me in gathering in front of people is a way or a form of rebuking and reprimanding لا أرض السماع I'm not ready to listen to you Who's saying this? Imam Shafi'i رحمه الله So here the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying Love the one whom we love to a certain degree which is moderately Perhaps one day he will be someone for whom they have hatred. The same person. The second law of Newton, where every action there is a reaction equal in magnetic, of the then, direction. So, this is in physics, right? It's not only in physics. It is applied everywhere. When you go to the extreme, also you go to the other extreme. For whom you hate it, and hate the one for whom you have hatred to a certain degree. Moderately, perhaps one day he will be one whom you love. And this is true. Someone you were, you didn't like him before, you didn't love him, and now you are brothers. MashaAllah, you love each other. Who changes the hearts? Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we have to be moderate in everything. Everything we do. Some tips or techniques for gaining people's hearts. The salam, number one. Spreading salam. This salam, you know that the first thing when Adam alayhi salam life is starting, going through him, what happened to Adam? Who knows? The first thing when the spirit, when the ruh entered the body of Adam, what happened? What did he do? He sneezed. He sneezed. And he said, Alhamdulillah. Then he was told to go to a group of angels and to salute them. And he told them, Salaamu Alaikum. And they told him, Alaikum Salaamu Alaikum. This is the greeting for you and for your offspring. <coughs> your children. So the salam. As salam is one of the names of Allah. Allahumma anta salam wa minka as salam. Oh Allah, you are as salam. The one who gives this peace. And the source of peace, peace comes only from Allah. And if you don't know as salam, there will not be salam. If you don't know Allah, who is the source of salam, you will not have peace within yourself. You will not have it. So spreading the salam. And spreading the salam is found upon us. To spark, guard it. And to reply is more obligatory. To reply is more obligatory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nur, that is Surah 24, Ayah 27. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu la tadkulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta tasta'nisu wa tusallimu ala ahliha. لا 
ذلكم خير لكم لعلكم تذكرون all you who believe enter not houses other than your own houses that are not yours you don't enter until you have asked permission and greeted those in them as the hadith in surah al-nur the ayah so house is not yours you don't enter there is something called the etiquette of seeking permission you knock how many times you knock three times that's it not to keep passing the bell till the coil is burnt only thing one person will be in a in a condition to receive people Maybe he's sick, maybe his wife is sick, maybe so a child is sick. He's not in the mood to see no one. Yes, he's inside. <coughs> he is and that's it. You go. And you should not feel offended or angry or something. These are manners Islam teach us. And when you ring, you don't face the door. You go to the right or you go to the left. Because maybe a girl or a woman will open the door thinking that this is one of our children or... And the moment a person starts to open, you give the salam. The salam alayhi. This man is Islam teaches. Not only that, Islam has taught us when to visit people. And Allah made it very clear. After Isha, no visiting. People should go to sleep so that they will not miss the fight. After Fajr, no visiting. After Zuhr, no visiting. People are taking naps. So what will remain? Tell me. What will remain? Between Asr and Maghrib and between Maghrib and It's the time to visit. So it is very short. Not that people, some people, they will come and they will leave after, almost after midnight. Wasting your time. The second day you have to go to work. Or sometimes they make you miss the pleasure, etc. So we have, this is what Islam teaches us, the salam. You have to give the salam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a Sahih Muslim, the same thing when they are calling the phone, in the rings, and that's enough. Okay? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, by him in whose hand is my, is my life, you will not enter Jannah until you believe. And you will not believe until you love one another. Shall I inform you of something which if you do, you will love one another, promote greetings amongst yourself. That's your salah. So the Prophet in this hadith is telling us, you will not enter the Jannah until you love one another. And you will not love one another until you, you will not enter the Jannah until you love one another. So do you want to know what will make you love each other? The salam. In Islam, if two are walking and then they were separated by a barrier, a tree or a car, when they meet they have to give salam. You know this? Yeah. We are walking together and we are seeing each other, but we are separated. We will say salam alaykum. At home, you went and came back. You went to the kitchen, came back. Salam alaikum. Some people they say this is too much. What? This is business with Allah. This is business with Allah. You don't want hasanat? Easy. Angels they reply. The angels are writing hasanat for you. So some people say, every time, salam, salam, what's this? No, yes. Ibn Umar, I think, 
he would enter the market, okay, from one end and he would come from the other end. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. And he would come from, so he didn't buy anything. He said, I didn't, I didn't come here to buy. I came to give the salam. When you enter your home, you have to give the salam. You know what? How oh, do you know this? When you go home, the first thing you have to give salam to your family. Salam alaikum. Not that you kick the door. Where is the food? <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ said, when you enter your house and you don't give salam, the shaitan, the shayateen, they tell each other, well done. We'll have shelter for tonight. Hmm? We will sleep. Free accommodation tonight. They give you the food, you start eating without the basma, they start eating with you. Oh, good guy. Also meal, free meal, free accommodation tonight. But if you enter and say, Salaamu Alaikum, the shayatin, they say, we have to leave. We cannot. So, they keep this in mind. Every time you go, it's Salaamu Alaikum. He give the salam. Will you? Yes. Keep practicing. Okay. Our deen is, is code of life. We have to start practicing. So if you spread the salam, you will love each other. The second tip, inshallah, which also it works and it makes it works, it makes wonders. Smile. Keep smiling. Will it cost you anything to keep smiling? Nothing. Just one centimeter up, one centimeter down. That's it. Move your lips. Keep smiling. When you meet your brothers, keep smiling. Sisters, they meet each other, keep smiling. Brother meets a sister, keep smiling. Huh? What do you think? Keep smiling? No. Put your head down and go ahead. Don't smile to your sister. Oh, you sister, don't smile at your brother. Huh? Uh, you open the door by the shape of. Hmm? Okay. I'll tell you something. A brother, a brother of mine, he came to me. And he said, uh, he's doing dawah, he's distributing pamphlets, booklets, etc. In hospitals, clinics. And he said, there's a good sister there. And she's helping me to distribute these things to the patients. And, and every time I give her a bundle of pamphlets, she smiles and says, Zakir Rafi. She told him, watch, take care. Hmm? Take care. Leave them on the desk. Don't talk to her. Don't say anything. Just go. See, so she's a good sister, I said. I'm telling you. Don't play with fire. After a few days, he came and said, you know, I feel something. <laughs> something happened to what? His heart. You know the cubic colors. Women, they have this uh, mass destructive mother. <laughs> yes, the owls. They will shoot you one, they call, that's why they call it cubic owl. And see the teenagers, they have hearts out through the hearts. And then the, the tip of the heart is dripping blood. Have you seen that? So he came and said, my heart, I told you, I told you, lower your gaze. So when you see a sister, put your head down. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us. Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and to protect their private hearts. And tell the believing woman, Yahudna min Absarihim, to lower the gaze. And see the link, Allah, the Creator, who's speaking, the one who created us, the one who knows us. He linked the look with the private part. 
Because what triggers the private art? The, the art. What will excite you, young men? If you look. If you, the moment you come out from your house and you are looking down, minding the steps, you'll be fine. But the moment you start looking around, you'll be in trouble. Are you following? So you smile when you meet your brother, a sister meets her sister, they smile. So smiling, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Sulaiman alayhi salam, فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكًا مِنْ قَوْلِهَا Sulaiman smiled, amused at her speech. Because Sulaiman alayhi salam was in a parade, was moving with his troops. A little ant in a valley said to the rest of the ants, go to your homes, go! Now, Solomon and his troops will cut you under their feet. And Sulaiman alayhi salam heard her, so he smiled. See, this little ant gave da'wah and warning to her. Try to warn them. So Sulaiman alayhi salam smiled. The Prophet has in Tirmidhi, and it's authentic hadith, and also in Sahih al -Gyana. he said, Receiving your brother with a smiling, cheerful, cheerful face is charity. Think, Allah say, whenever I met the Prophet he would smile. Always. Every time I meet the Prophet he smiles. So this is Sunnah. Keep smiling. Even if someone will hate him, keep smiling when you meet him. Because when you smile when you meet him, you kill him. Inside he's boiling. What's wrong with this guy? He doesn't know what I have in my heart. I hate him. But every time you meet him, you smile. And you give him salam. Even if he doesn't reply. Salaamu Alaikum. And then sometimes he will pretend that he doesn't see you, right? No. He will do like this. Because so, you are deviant. So he will not give you something. Okay? So tell him, Salaamu Alaikum, brother so and so. Huh? I know, I see, I know you are seeing me. Don't let the shaitan play with you. Okay? Salaam. We want salam, we want peace. Peace with ourselves, peace within our families, within our community. That's what we lack and that's what we want. We want to spread this salam and this peace and love among us. Enough division, enough hatred. And when you love, when someone loves you, you see, the moment a person starts to love you, he will listen to you, draw enough. He will listen to you. I'll give you this true story. There was a man next to the masjid, neighbor of the masjid. <coughs> and he never went to the masjid. People, they talked to the hem and advised him. Even sometimes people, they visit him <coughs> and just before Adan. So when the Adan goes on, they tell him, come, come. And they will take him to the masjid. The moment they say, Allah Akbar, he leaves the masjid. <coughs> so one of the mashayikh, rahimahullah, he told me this is true. This happened in Syria. He told me, I visited him before Adam. Adam went, I, I didn't say, come to the Salah or something. I went to the Salah. I visited him the second time. And he said, I bought him a chicken. Chicken. He said, this is for the children. Put it. When the Adan went, he said, Salaamu Alaikum. He said, hey, what are you doing? He said, come to the mosque. He said, wait for me, please. What did the job? What did the job? 
the chicken. <laughs> yes. You should know. Because now he loved you. He gave him something. So now he's ready to listen to you. So when you love someone, then you will you open your heart. Once the people open their hearts, that's it. That's what we have to work on. Not that we come to the people and we face them, criticize them, or pressing the news and point, pinpointing their shortcomings and faults. Then after that we expect them to listen to us. What do you think? Is this wise? Is this the way of the Prophet of Or the way of the wise men? It doesn't make any sense. So, the smiling. So, if, when you receive your brother, you receive him with this smile. So, even if he has something, you will force him. You are affecting, influencing him psychologically. Because now he has an inner struggle inside him. Inner struggle. This guy is, 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 is strange. I hate him, he meets me, he smiles. Until one day, he will tell himself, wake up, enough is enough. Why are you hating this person? Why do you hate him? What did he do for you? Because you are now trying to trigger the seed of good in this person. Is this clear to your brothers and sisters? Are you ready to do that? Shall we? The third tip, calling each other by the best names. You want to, to reach my heart? Call me with the best name. Not with my nickname and the name that I hate and the name that you used to call me when we were playing in the alleys. Huh? Because we grew up together, you know. So you used to call me a bad name and now you are still calling me. With, you expect me after that to listen to you? Huh? Call him, oh brother so and so, oh father of so and so. Respect. So when you call me and you give me the title, Kunya, oh father of so and so, this is respect. You talk to me in polite manner. You should not call each other with bad names because that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very clear that it is haram. Haram is fil al So you should not call each other by offensive nicknames. Because sometimes these nicknames, they are, they are very bad. True or not? So you should not use them. Like you see, the, at the time of Umar bin Khattab, A father came complaining about his son. He said, my son is undutiful. So Umar called the child. He said, oh Amir al ask him what is my name? He said, what is his name? He said, Jural. Jural. In Arabic, Jural, Jural means the beetle. You know the beetle? The beetle, they roll the stool. Okay? The dung, the, the excrement, that beetle. It's called Jualam, Jual. So, this is my name. The name he gave me. In Islam, a child has rights over you before he come into being. Before he's born, you have to choose the pious and righteous mother. That's the right of the child. When you want to sleep with your partner, you have to make dua. That's the right of the child. Because if you don't make dua, the shaitan participates. So then you should not that surprise why the children are very impish. Ask yourself, did you say the dua? 
And then, when he was born, he did the aqiqah and he made the adhan, he came into this dunya. So he has a, 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 a series of rights over you. So Umar said, radiallahu anhu, you've been, he said to the father, you have been unfair to him, first of all. Of course the child is, is mistaken, but also you too. So we should not Okay, the brothers outside, please try to squeeze, huh? Make room for them. And if there is a room inside, there is room? Okay, so try to move. You will listen. You will hear. So make room, Barakallah, because for your brothers. So now we know that you've called me with the best name. The best name for your brothers. For your brother, we are talking to each other, given the kunya. The same thing, uh, sisters. He say, oh mother of so and so. Ya um fulan, abu fulan, um fulan, etc. And subhanallah, even the Prophet was giving this kunya to children. To children. The, the brother of Anas has a little bird and the bird died. So the Prophet ﷺ came and he wanted to soothe and console the child and he told him, Ya Aba Umayr, Ma Ba'ala Nugayr, O father of Umayr, little child, O father of Umayr, what happened to your little girl? And the ulama, they did use from this hadith, it is sunnah to give kunya to the child. Also, among the things that softens people's heart, and shake it. This is Sunnah. And the first people who made and taught start practicing hand shaking are the people of Yemen. As mentioned in the Hadith. And when two Muslims they meet and they shake hands, what happened to their sins? They fall apart. So the sins they fall apart, you are shaking hands. And also when you are shaking my hands, don't remove your hand. <coughs> Prophet ﷺ, he will not remove his hand till the other one removes his hand. Are you following? So shaking hands, first of all the sins they fall. So by the time we, we leave each other, our sins are forgiven. So this is the virtue and the merit of handshaking between the same sex. Men with men, women with women. The Prophet ﷺ says in, in the hadith which is in Sunan Abu Dawood, any two Muslims meet and shake hands with each other, Allah will forgive their sins before they depart. Before they depart. Their sins are forgiven. SubhanAllah. Today's people then, and they say, Hi, how are you today? What's this hi? What's the value of hi? Hmm? What's the reward I'm getting? First of all, you didn't say salam. People now they don't say salam. Good morning, good afternoon. And in the Arab world, oh, oh they have many things. Sabah al Wad. Sabah al Fool. The Arabs they love it. Sabah al Wad, rosy day, rosy morning. Huh? Morning of huh? Fool, you know fool? The beans. Day of beans. <laughs> Instead of salamu alaykum. Okay? So shaking hands. This is sunnah. Also, but to shake hands with the opposite sex, oh, that's a big problem. And before I explain this hadith, 
I read an article once in the local newspapers. They say a journalist here in London, what she did? She went to the telephone booths and she would pretend that she would, she was, she would call, come, uh, make a telephone call. And she would leave some coins. And she would come up. The next caller would go in and he would find the coins and he would put the coins in his pocket. And she's waiting. The moment he, he, he comes out, she would accost him, meet him, say, did you find anything inside? He said, no. And she did this with men. Then, with one of them, with the moment he came out, hello, how are you? She shook hand it. Did you find anything inside? He said, yes, here they are. See, two different charges, positive and negative. Man and a woman. Head hearts, what happened? Feelings. Feelings. If you are a man, I'm talking if you are a man. <laughs> if you are a man, if you are just you know, <laughs> that is your problem. <laughs> but some people they say, I know you token. Believe me. They, I feel just they are like my sisters. <laughs> really? Go on and do something, please. Huh? You have another problem. Huh? You, have, you have another problem. If you don't feel anything, you are not right. You are not normal. <laughs> <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ was teaching us, by the way, he saw a woman, and Allah is teaching us through his prophets. And he left the member. He was on the member. And he came down, and he went. And he came back and his beard was dripping with water and his hair. What happened? He went and he slept with one of his wives. Teaching us. And he said, I saw a woman. And I went to my wife. Who was talking? Prophet Muhammad That's why he said, if you see a woman, go back to your wife. What that woman got, your wife has the same thing. That's the solution. That's the remedy. That's the cure. We remove all these definite thoughts from your mind. So that's why Islam has handshaken with women. Don't tell me, but this is the culture in the country. People will be offended. Who is more important, Allah or the people? Whom do we want to please, Allah or the people? That's the that's the question. I don't care. They get angry. I don't care. And you know, brother, he travels a lot to Europe and he's a manager. He sends in advance in an email, I don't shake hands with women. So avoid any problems and they respect you for that. So when a woman receives her, she will not shake hands because he already told her. And mashallah, he travels always with his normal thought. And when peace, he studied in America, when peace became a Muslim through him, and what actually impressed the, the peace, that he, they were traveling together and it was winter snowing, and he was with his thought. 
And he went and he took a wudu and he came out in, and it was slow. And he said, what's wrong with this guy? And he started praying. See? So my brothers and sisters, be proud of your faith, of your deed. Stick to it. We are in moments of trials, tests, but we have to hold the rope. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that we are leaving the deen. Our problem is because we are leaving the deen and we are leaving the remaining part of it. Instead of holding it and coming back to Allah and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reform our situation and improve it and to forgive us, we are leaving the deen. This is the situation. We want help from Allah and we are sinning and disobeying Allah. How can Allah help us? Allah then will desert us with Iyadu Billah. But if He sees that we are coming back to Him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives. Not that sister ships will start removing their Iyadu or their Niqab. And subhanAllah, you'll find some people who call themselves between double quotes, people of knowledge, they will tell them, yeah, because of the situation, there is no harm of you. Remove it. Remove your hijab. They don't know that this piece of cloth is a logo, label. It's a da'wah in itself. This little beard you have is a label. I know that this brother is a Muslim. <coughs> Maintaining the identity. <coughs> so here this beautiful hadith which we have, the Prophet ﷺ are talking about hand shaking. And shaking hands. He said it is better for you, listen to this, if you take hand with a woman whom you are not allowed to marry, is not mahram, and you take hand with her. So with non-Muslim you tell them I don't shake hands. Put your hands in your pocket, you see? Hi. My hands are in my pocket. And I talk. I'm talking and I'm putting my head down. It is rude, right? Yeah, they teach you if you want to take courses and communication skills. They say eye contact. The eye contact. You have to look into the eyes. That's what they teach you. And they tell the, our sisters, look to the eye. Because if you look down, that means your personality is shaky, weak. So it should be, have strong personality, talk eye to eye. Allah says, blow up, and they say, no, don't blow. <laughs> Whom should we listen to? Whom should we listen to? The culture says, look. Allah says, don't look. The culture says, shake. Allah says, don't shake. So listen to this hadith. It is better for one of you Muslims to be pricked by a needle in his head than shaking a hand with a woman who is not a mahram. In other words, it's better for you to have an arrow to penetrate your head and come from the other side rather than shaking hands. We ask you, do you want this arrow to go through your head or you shake hands? You say, shoot the arrow. This is what the hadith talks about. It's a sin. It's a sin. And you find da'is, they are surrounded by women and they are taking pictures. Huh? And they are smiling. Is this our Islam? The truth hurts. But is this our Islam? So there is something wrong. 
we have to come to our team. So yes, we shake hands with each other. Men with men, women with women. Another tip, my dear brothers and sisters. The good manners. If you have good manners, you will be able to reach people's hearts. Because you force the people to respect you. You know this? Sheikh Rambaz Rahimahullah, because of his akhlaq, even those who disagree with him, they respect him. A scholar came from Somalia. He's a scholar. That's his aqeedah. That's not correct. And Sheikh Ibn Baz, he received him and he treated him well. And, and the Sheikh, he liked Sheikh Ibn Baz and started listening to him and his aqeedah was correct. I don't. The clock, the manners, because that's what they learned from the Prophet <coughs> Listen to this beautiful hadith in Tirmidhi. He says, Sallallahu two qualities are not found in our munafiq a hypocrite. Good manners and understanding of the deen. You will not find a munafiq he has good manners, and understanding of the of the deen. So, good manners. If you want really to be very close to the Prophet you should improve your manners. In the hadith in Muslim, the Prophet said, Inna Allah jameelan yuhibbul jamal. Allah is jameel, beautiful. And he loves beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most beautiful. And inshallah we are going to see Allah in the Jannah. Because you know that my dear brothers and sisters, there is a day in the Jannah where we visit Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَهُمَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ لَهُمَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا They will have whatever they want and more مزيد more What is that? The Prophet ﷺ said The more is seeing the face of Allah Seeing Allah Himself in the Jannah so there is a day in the Jannah where people, they visit Allah. And the people from the different levels of Jannah, they come to a place. And they will sit on piles of musk and chairs of light. And then a cloud of musk will rain on them. And then Allah appears. And everyone looks at Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after this, He tells them, now go to the market of the Jannah. There is a market in the Jannah. So, and you take from this market whatever you want. And you go back to your mansion, to your palace, to your wife, and, and to your huriyat. <coughs> The moment you go back to your wife, they say, Wallahi, innakum akhtar jamalin minna minna sabah or minna tartumun. Now you are looking more handsome than when you left us in the morning. And the men they would reply, and by Allah, you are more beautiful than when we left you. So what increased the beauty? Try to tell me. What increased the beauty of both men and women there in the Jannah? Seeing Allah. Seeing Allah increased their beauty. Because He is the most beautiful. Allah Jameel. Imagine Yusuf was giving half the beauty. Have the beauty of the human beings. 
Are you following? That's why he cannot blame the woman. What they happen? They cut their fingers without feeling. Huh? Because you know the story of the wife and the rumors went in the community. What is wrong with this? Huh? The wife of the king, he is crazy with her slave. I said, okay, my slave, huh? I'll show you. Okay? I'm inviting you for, for tea. Come, tea party. Come. And he prepared knives, I'm sure very sharp ones. And the fruit, I said to Yusuf, go, just pass. They drop jewels. They cut their fingers. Yusuf! Okay? So imagine when you see Allah. That's the most, there's no pleasure after that in the Jannah. More than seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So good manners. You want good manners? You have to work it. You will be very close to the Prophet Another tip is making room for others to sit. Right now. You don't look at me and I'm standing eh? and you don't make room for me. If you make room for me, I will appreciate that. Understand? So this is what Islam teaches us. So this is one of way where you can also soften one's heart. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya bil majalisi Or you believe when you are told to make room in assemblies and gatherings, spread out and make room. Ample room will Allah provide for you. Allah will make room for you where? In the Jannah. Another tip is the exchanging of gifts. Remember the chicken? What the chicken did? Mm. Remember that, huh? Chicken, did it? Sheikh uh, Ahmad Didat, Allah, he said the samosa. I'm using the samosa for the da'wah. And I saw it on the video tape. He would call them, non-Muslims, to his house and give them food and everything. And after the food, uh, choke. And then give them the Quran and they are giving the shahada. Right? And so the man said, where is this book? I think they call it Popo. In English, yeah? yeah. So he said, where is it? Because now Sulaiman is checking everyone. And after a while this bird came. Say, I reach a place you don't know it. And this bird was angry. Imagine, O oh Sulaiman, imagine they are prostrating. They are worshipping other than Allah. He was angry because people are making kill. The bird was angry. So Sulaiman he wrote the letter and said, take this letter. Go. And he went. He read the letter, said, okay. And do one thing. She was very intelligent, very smart. Queen! He said, وَإِنِّي مُرْسِلَةُ إِلَيْهِمْ بِهَدِيَّةٍ بِمَا She said, but I'm going before we, because the people said, what? We are very strong. We are mighty. We are warriors. We will fight. He said, no, 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 no. no. I will handle it better than you. Okay? I know. So he said, but I am going to send him a present. And wait to see with what answer return my ambassadors. I'm going to send a gift. And when Sulaiman, the ambassador, came and gave him the gift, he said, What? You're bribing me with your gifts? Wait. I'm going to send now an army, the beginning of San Yaman, and the rest in Palestine. And then he said, Who can bring her throne? And when he saw her throne already there, and they told her, and he said, Sulaiman as you know the story, he said, Make now a massive building made of glass. And when she came and she raised her dress, and she thought it was water, and she became Muslim. So here, she said, Inni Mursilatun 
killing him the hadiyah, but I am going to send him a present. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith which is in Adab al-Muhammad by Imam Bukhari, he said, Tahadu Tahab. Tahadu Tahab. Exchange gifts among yourself, which will strengthen love between you, which will bring about love between you. You give your brother a hadith, gift, and he will give you also another, another gift. So this brings about and strengthens the, the love between yourselves. And that's how you unlock the door of the heart. Also, respect others and never despise anyone. Never look upon any human being. Respect. Don't say he's a sinner. Because this is a problem. Some people, they start practicing Islam and say, Oh, you know, don't, don't, don't. He's a sinner, he's this, he's that. Of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can guide them to Allah. Listen to this story. Malik ibn Dina, rahimahullah ta'ala. A thief jumped into his house. Malik ibn Dina was one of the Zuhar, pious, righteous people. So the thief, he jumped into this, the house of Malik and he did not find anything. He looked here and there, nothing. What was there? Nothing. A utensil or container for the wudu and... Uh, and Malik was in the dark. He was watching. The thief was looking, looking, oh, nothing in this house. So let us try the next one. So now the thief was about to leave. And Malik said, you didn't find anything. Did you? Uh-huh. <laughs> Huh? Can you imagine? Visualize the scene? You are stealing and someone is calling you? <laughs> you will be trembling. And you know what? When a person is going to steal, or to date, or to do something funny, his tawakkul is upon Allah. You know this? Imam al said, said, the human being is very strange. He is going to steal you. While he is going, he is saying, Oh Allah, protect him. <laughs> oh Allah, save me. And he is serious. His tawakkul is upon Allah. Then he was going to steal. Another two story, a brother said, who oh Allah guided, he went to a, a, a flat, dated, had a date with a woman, and when he's inside, her husband came. She said, where should I go? Where? She said, you know, come to go to the balcony. The balcony on the main street. Huh? And be there. So he will not come to the balcony. He said, if just he opened the balcony and said, boom, I will jump <laughs> out of fear. But alhamdulillah, Allah saved me. Imagine you are in that situation. Yes, I will never do it again. Yes, yes, save me, Allah. Okay? So, so now, the thief, Malcolm Dini now is calling him. He didn't find anything. It's not, he said, it is not fair that you leave empty-handed. It's not fair that you leave empty-handed. Come. He came, the thief. He says, sit down. Go take wudu. Go take wudu and pray to Raka. SubhanAllah. What do you think? When you pray the to Raka, with ikhlas or with showing off? What do you think? Tell me. A class. A class. The top of a class. Oh Allah. I will never do it. Save me. <laughs> Why he is doing that sincerely, Malik rahimahullah was also praying to Allah to guide him. Allah. 
So by the time he finished the Salah, he was a different person. He came and he sat and he was teaching him. Fajr went on, Dadan, both of them went to the Masjid. The neighbors they say, oh Malik, you had a guest, we know you don't have anyone. He said, he came to steal us, we stole him. <laughs> he came to steal us, we stole him. Stole him from the shaitan, he saved him. So never look upon anyone. You never know. He is a sinner. Take another two stories. The problem that we don't read our heritage. Very rich. Who have heard about Imam uh, I remember his name. Ibn Uyab, I forget the name. Who? No, I, I shall remember the name. <coughs> al Fudayl, yes, Al Fudayl. Al Fudayl, Imam Al Fudayl, Rahimallah. If you read now the books, they say Al Imam Al Fudayl. Imam Al Fudayl. Imam, Imam. One of the leading, towering figures. What was he? What was Al Fudayl? He was a highway robber. You know, highway robber? See. Specialized in robbing the pilgrims. <coughs> Not anyone. Specialized to steal the pilgrims. And who judge? Someone is going to Mecca. He will stop him, take his money, food and everything. And one night, two pilgrims, two pilgrims. The night fell on them, so they sought shelter in a deserted building. And al Fudayl was in the next room, war only between them. And the two pilgrims were praying and asking Allah, Oh Allah, save us from al Fudayl. <laughs> and al Fudayl was next to them. <laughs> and he started to cry. He started crying. He said, and that evil, the pilgrims are pleading to Allah to save them from my evil, he repented. And he became Imam of the Muslims. So never look upon any Muslim. He is still a Muslim. You should love him and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him. <coughs> also, humbleness. Be a humble person. People, they like the people who are very humble. I may have seen scholars. Shaykh Mubaz, rahimahullah, those who saw him, he is very, very humble. You will not see that he is a scholar. Only after he starts when he speaks. He is very humble. And there are many, many scholars. They are very humble. And this is the nature of scholars. They fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they are down to earth. They're not arrogant. Only the ignorance are arrogant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, Surah 17, Ayah 37, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضَ وَلَا تَبْلِغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولًا وَلَا تَبْلِغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولًا No walk on earth with insolence, with Hotiness. For you cannot rend the earth asunder, nor reach mountains in height. Who was giving this? Luqman was advising his son. The Prophet ﷺ says, Allah has revealed to me, Allah has revealed to me that you should humble yourself to one another. Humble yourself to one another. I humble myself for you. Because you are my brother. One should neither hold himself above another, nor transgress against another. This is what Islam teaches us, to be humble to them. comes and tells you, why should you lower yourself? Right? 
Why should I lower myself? No, I'm not lowering myself for him. I'm lowering myself for Allah. Allah commanded his prophet commanding his own prophet and lower your wing for the believers. Lower your wing, humble yourself. So here, if you lower yourself for the sake of Allah, what will happen? Listen to this hadith, which is in Sayyid al-Jama'ah, authentic hadith. Whoever humbles himself, man tawada'a lillahi, rafa'ahu. Man tawada'a lillahi, rafa'ahu. Whoever humbles himself for Allah's sake, his or her status will be elevated. You will be elevated in the sight of Allah. In the sight of Allah, in the sight of Allah, and your status will be elevated. Also, among the these, inshallah, tips we are only going through, guarding against backbiting, never backbite or slander. As a matter of fact, you should defend your brother or your sister. Someone is backbiting, you should not. You should defend. And when you defend your brother or your sister in their absence, and the news breaks them, what will happen to them? They will love you or hate you? They will love you. Because you are defending them. Though they were not there. Because backbiting is a sin, you know that. So you should not entertain the riba, the backbiting. Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah ibn, uh, and Ibn Qayyim. You know Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah during his time, he had many enemies, many enemies. And they wronged him, and they put him in jail, in Egypt, all his lifetime in jail. And he died in jail. And most of this fatawa, he wrote them in, in jail, he was inside. But then to, they took the papers and the pens and he fell sick and he died. So when the people, his enemies, Muslims, they heard now that he is sick, they started visiting him and asking him to forget, forgive them. And he said, I have forgiven every Muslim. And those scholars in Egypt who gave a fatwa and they put him in jail, and what jail? It was a well. <coughs> With his brothers in a well. That was the jail. When he came out, and the ruler, because he loved Sheikh Islam, he wanted Sheikh Islam to give him a fatwa so he will execute, he would kill the scholars. Sheikh Islam told him, no, you should not. Because you have no right. These are the best, these are the scholars of Islam, they, the Ummah are in need of them, and he started praising them. Ibn Makhlouf is one of his enemies. He said, Ibn Taymiyyah is amazing. After we did what we did, he started praising us and defending us. And the ruler said at the end, when he didn't find any way that he would convince Sheikh Islam to tell him go ahead. Because the ruler he would kill them. And on the day of resurrection, when Allah said, Ibn Taymiyyah gave me fatwa. Hmm? So he said, but they did this and this and this and this and this to you. He said, they have forgiven them. Hmm? So the case is dismissed. I have forgiven them. So when you, so one of his enemies died, he was giving Sheikh Islam tough time, lying about him, spreading <coughs> rumors, etc. He died. Ibn al Qayyim, you know Sheikh Islam Ibn al Qayyim is in the students. He came running to him, saying, Alhamdulillah. <coughs> So and so died. What happened? What did Sheikh Islam do? 
said, Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa inna And he got angry with his, with his students, with Ibn al-Qayyim, and said, You should not be happy. You should not feel like this. <coughs> he re rebuked him. And he said, and he got up and he left, and he went to the family of that man. And he gave condolences. And he said to the children, Consider me my fa your father, after your father. Anything you need, ask me. Now tell me, those children who have been brainwashed throughout their life by their father, who was telling them Ibn Taymiyyah's horrible shaitan and all this, and now Ibn Taymiyyah is taking care of his children. Say, anything you need, just call me. These are the big hearts. Those people who are righteous, pious. They don't want the dunya, they want the akhirah. So when you lower yourself, Allah will elevate your status. And so backbiting, <coughs> avoid it. So when you hear someone is backbiting, you stop it. Or if you cannot, leave. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said in the hadith, which is very beautiful hadith, he said, مَنْ قَمِنَا مَا بَيْنَ لِحْيَيْهِ وَمَا بَيْنَ لِجْلَيْهِ ضَمِنْتُ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ All of us, inshallah, we want the Jannah. He said, whoever can guarantee two things, what is between his jaws, that's the tongue, and what is between his two legs, the perfect part, I guarantee paradise for him. Guarantee. Two things. The tongue and the private heart. Maybe they protect the private heart, but not the tongue. You want the Jannah? And the Prophet said, I guarantee the Jannah. The tongue, you don't talk, and the private heart. Abu Bakr Siddiq used to hold his tongue and he, and he would say, it is you that is going to take me to hell. And the Prophet ﷺ says in another hadith, Man samata naja, to Sahih al-Jan. He who keeps silent, refrain from idle talks, will be delivered, will be saved. Also among the Tips, inshallah. Are you following? Okay. Attentiveness. Lending one's ear. When someone is talking to you, listen to them. Pay attention. So I know now you love me and I will love you. I respect you. Because you listen to me. One of the Salaf said, by Allah, a little boy or a man, he said, a man would narrate or relate to me a hadith that I memorized it when I was very young. He was a boy. And I would listen to him as if, it is, as if I'm hearing it the first time. As if I'm hearing this hadith the first time. Though I know it. So attentiveness. You lend one's ear. Listen to Ibn Abbas anhu was saying. He said, the one who sits next to you, someone sits next to you. He said, the one who sits next to me has three rights. Three rights. So imagine now, has three rights. To look at him when he enters. When he enters, you look at him. Make room for him when he sits. Make room for him. Listen to him when he talks. So three rights. You look at him, 
You make room for him and you listen to him when he should have said it long time ago. Okay, so now it has to speed up. So attentiveness. Also, calmness. <coughs> should be calm first. There's no need to be uh, angry or furious, no need. Okay. When you deal with people calmly, they, you will uh, able to, will be able to reach their heart. University, the calm, be a generous person. You know in the hadith, a Bedouin who was not a Muslim, came to the Prophet and the Prophet and he asked the Prophet said, give me. The Prophet he said, do you know the mount, these two mountains? He mentioned the name. The valley between them is full of livestock, camels, sheep, gold. That is yours. All this? He said, yes, that's yours. This is the policy of the Prophet he took the, the camels and he went to his tribe. See, what's wrong with you? What are you waiting? Go and follow the deen of Muhammad. See what he gave me. Yes, he was the light. So if you are a generous person, huh, you will gain them. That's why in Islam, then those who are entitled for zakah, Mu'allafa qulubum. Who are the mu'allafa qulubum? Those who we try to make them come and attract them to Islam. Are you following? We give them zakat, not Muslim. We give them zakat. To gain them. Sense of humor. It should be hilarious. Hmm? Have sense of humor. Not always sulky face and stern and serious. No. Be charming person. The Prophet was joking. <coughs> Listen to this beautiful hadith in Sahih ibn Malik. He said, Suhaib he said, I came to the Prophet and found him eating date and bread. And he invited me so. Invited me. So I started eating the date only. The date. And the Prophet ﷺ said, You eat date when you can hardly see. How oh, you are not you cannot see I had eye ailment. And you are no I'm seeing you are eating eating the date. Not uh, the bread. That means you are seeing the the date. SubhanAllah. They, uh, he said, I chew using the other side. Yes, I'm trying. and try to my best to, to see what is soft and I uh, eat the day. The Prophet ﷺ started laughing. Also, a, a woman came to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted to, to, uh, to make her feel happy. And he wanted to joke with her. The Prophet ﷺ kind of. Because he's Masu, right? So he said, are you the wife of so-and-so? Are you the wife of so-and-so who has whiteness in his eye? He said, I, I didn't see that. I have to check. So she went to her husband to say, come, come, come. Let me have to look at your eyes. Do you have whiteness? He said, are you? Something happening. <laughs> Every human being there has white part in his eye. Yeah. See, the Prophet was joking. <laughs> the old lady who came to the Prophet and said, Oh Prophet of Allah, ask Allah to Allah, to Allah and to me. Yeah. Said so old woman, they don't have to tell me. Started to cry. Because you are going to be young there. So you're not going to be old. So the Prophet would joke, but without life. The Sahaba. The Sahaba, Abu Huraira, he would laugh till he was 
about to, to fall. Laughing, laughing, laughing. He couldn't take it. Abu Huraim. The Sahaba, they would eat melon, and after that, the peel, the skin. <laughs> Throwing the skin, the peels, hitting each other. With the peels, imagine we did it. And say what? We were seeing us. I said, what happened to those bugs? The men joking with each other. The Sahab. A Shabi, Imam Shabi, is very hilarious. Very humorous. He was saying, listen to this. He said one day, even if you don't have anything to break your fast with, suck your finger. One of the audience, uh, he said, which finger? <laughs> he said, this one, and he showed him his toe. Huh? You don't know which finger? He said, by the toe. A woman, a man came to ask, and Imam Shabi was, to a woman was asking him a question. So he came, and this man he said, who, who, who one of you is a Shabi? Imam Shabi said, he's a Shabi. He's telling him, what happened to you? I'm the Shabi, I'm the man. You don't know? She's the Shabi. <laughs> also, another uh, time, uh, he was mentioning the hadith, Imam Shabi. If you read the seerahs of the Salaf, it's amazing, subhanAllah. Our heritage is so rich. A man came to him and he said, the, the, he was explaining Imam Shabi, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that if you have a beard, you have to take a handful of water and, and soak it. Do something, put it under your shin. The man said, it is, that doesn't wet the whole thing. What can I do? He said, soak it from the night before. <laughs> <laughs> soak it, put it in water from the, the night before. So, subhanAllah. Also, among the tips, avoid anger. Don't get angry. Don't get angry. And listen to this beautiful hadith which is in Tirmidhi. He who controls his anger, though he is able to let it go, Allah will call him on the day of resurrection to make him choose whatever he likes from among the Huliyah. The Hulis. You want the Huliyah? You want them? Okay, don't get angry. <laughs> People are behind bars because of anger. People divorce their wives because of anger. No husband will divorce his wife when they are happy. You know, darling, you are divorced. <laughs> no. That's why you did call, Cheers, I divorced my wife. Why? I was angry. I was angry. I was angry. And sometimes the reason is so silly. Tell him, what was the reason? Say, I cannot mention. So silly. But he opened the door for the sheep. So he who controls his anger, though he is able to let it go, though the women, may Allah guide them and guide all of us, sometimes they drive him up, you know. <laughs> really? So that's why if you, if, he, if you get angry, leave. Leave. <coughs> Don't stay. Until you cool down. And sometimes she will follow you. Come, what are you doing? <laughs> You coward, come here. <laughs> what are you doing? Say, yes, I'm coward. I'm not a man. Okay? Leave. The Prophet one day came and he found and he said to a Fatima, imagine Fatima of the Allah Anna, she met Ali and you. See, these are the spices, you see? Every household will have this. She said, where is your husband? She said, he left the house and was very angry. The Prophet he knew where to find Ali. He went to the masjid. He knew where, where, where Ali would go. Ali went to the masjid, took wudu, cooled down, prayed to Rak'ah, and he slept in the masjid. Okay, he slept in the masjid. And he was covering his face with the, his cloak, and the cloak fell off, and, the, and his cheek was on the dust. And the Prophet was stabbing him. Oh, father of dust, get up. <laughs> and Ali went back to Fatima. Everything is normal. So don't get angry. Control your anger. Also, 
social justice. We have to be just with the people. So if we are just with the people, people will be, they will love you. And you will be able to reach their hearts. <coughs> Gentleness. You have to be very gentle. The Prophet ﷺ said to Aisha, Oh Aisha, because what happened? A man passed by the Prophet ﷺ. And you know, who we were in Medina. Okay. So they used to tell the Prophet Assam Ali. And in their tongue, Assam means death. And the Prophet ﷺ would say, Wa Ali, upon you. Death upon you. Aisha, she heard this man who said, Sam <coughs> alayka Muhammad. That means they, they wished death for the Prophet. Aisha couldn't handle it, couldn't take it. She said, Assam alayka ala abiqa. said, Death on you and your father. <laughs> so the Prophet said, Oh Aisha, kula. Oh Aisha, indeed Allah is gentle and loves gentleness and gives due to gentleness what he does not give to due to harshness and what he does not give you to other than it. So, <coughs> he said, didn't you hear what, they, what he said? Didn't you hear what he said? He said, didn't you hear what I told <laughs> I replied him. That's enough. Also, among the things that will soften people's heart, avoid argument. Don't argue. Don't argue. <coughs> For the sake of arguing, don't do it. Remember that the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, أَلَا زَعِيمٌ بِبَيْتٍ فِي رَبَضِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْمِرَارَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقَّارَ I guarantee you palace in the Jannah. For the one who leaves the argument, even he is like. He's like. But now it reaches just, we are arguing for the sake of it. You finish the argument and you end it. And so you will not miss the palace in the jungle. Closeness. Try to get closer to the people. When you get close to the people and try to, to see the, what they need and you ask about what they, the things they, they, uh, they are in need of and you help them, that also helps you. Also, there is something here which is very essential and we need it in our practical life. Pretense. <coughs> you have to pretend sometimes. You need to pretend. You cannot be yourself all the time. Listen to this beautiful hadith. Aisha Allah said that the man sought permission to enter upon the Prophet So he said, the Prophet he said, give him permission Give permission to him and what the bad son of his people. Then when he entered, he spoke politely to him. I should say, so I said, oh Messenger of Allah, you said about him what you said, and then you spoke to him politely and gently. So he said, oh Aisha, the worst people in, state, in the sight of Allah or in station before Allah on the day of resurrection are those whom people desert and abandon in order to save themselves from the evil speech. And this is a Bukhari and Muslim. Sometimes you need to pretend. And you need to be nice and pretend that you are okay with them. Though you hate them or you curse them as the Sahaba said, Kunna nakshuru fi wujuhi aqwa wa inna kulubna latalham. The Sahaba said, we would smile when we meet some people, though we are cursing them in their heart. In our hearts we are cursing them, but when we meet them we smile. This is not hypocrisy. So sometimes, not in your life, you have to pretend. Your wife, she made a dish for you. Oh, husband, what do you feel? Oh, it's nice, it's good. <laughs> though you cannot swallow it. <laughs> Yes, your child is talking to you, explaining to you something. Inshallah. 
So you pretend that you are autistic. <coughs> a child is talking to you. See, so this is life. So we need to do that. Also, you should have a pure heart. <coughs> 